Hey, what's going on guys? Got another video today where we are with the EG hatch again. So in the last video, we cut the quarter panels up. We got rid of those lips. That way we could pull the camber out and get the tire closer to the quarter panel so it didn't look like the tires were sitting really far under the car. I've done some work off camera, so I'll catch you guys up to speed on what we did. But before we get into that, this video is going to be on how to do an alignment at home the correct way. So let's get into it. We've got some toe plates. You can find these on Amazon for pretty cheap. I think they're like 40 or 60 bucks. But I've got these here, we just pulled them off the shelf. And they have tape measures in the box with them. And we're gonna set these up on each side of the car. We'll get the car set at its ride height. And I've already done the work of getting the camber how I want. And the good thing about doing like an alignment at home or having like a stance car like this is that the camber doesn't really matter because camber isn't what wears down tires like excessively. When you have a tire that's worn excessively, that's just because it has incorrect toe settings. And with those toe plates, we can get the toe settings perfect. So that way they're not pointed at each other or away from each other, causing the car to like swerve all over the road or be like darty. Whereas the camber just, instead of wearing the tire flat, it'll just wear one side versus the other. And with a stance car, usually even on an air ride car, the camber is not perfectly at zero when the car is driving down the road. So the most important thing is just making sure that you get the toe settings correct, and then you won't have that crazy excessive wear that you usually see on slammed cars because people don't get alignments after they put coilovers in, and then now you have that issue where your alignment's out of whack and get that excessive toe wear. When we left off last time, we got this side so it was fitting really well, but since then I've actually gone through and I put the camber back into the car, but then I put a wheel spacer on it. So there's a three quarter inch wheel spacer. So the car still has camber, but it's also very close to the wheel well. As you can see, everything is very tight, but it still looks good. And we did this one on video, but I also set this side up off camera. I just had some music going, it was just kind of hanging out. And this side also looks really well. I measured the camber settings on both of these and matched them. But now we get to do the fun part, which is setting the toe. I would say doing the camber and getting your spacing was definitely the most time consuming thing. Toe plates unbox now, and it's really simple. One of these will just go on each side of the car. We're doing just the toe on the rear of the car. So we'll set one plate on the ground there up against that wheel. And then we will also do the same thing for this wheel. We'll run our tape measures under the car to each side and we'll put them in the same groove. So I'll probably use this groove. So we'll use this one on each side, connecting the two plates together. We'll see our measurement on whatever side the tape rolls on. And then we'll do the same thing for this side and then make sure these are firmly up against the wheel on the left and the right side. And we'll be able to see what one is closer together or further apart. So now that we know kind of how these work, I'm gonna get the car raised up. We'll get it to its ride height because the alignment has to be done at the height that the car is driven at. That way, when it's being driven, the toe settings are correct 
because when it's parked, it doesn't matter what the toe setting is because it's not gonna be wearing the tire if it's sitting still. Whereas when it's rolling down the road, you wanna make sure that your alignment settings, again, especially toe, are where they need to be. So let's get this car up in the air. We'll get our height set and then we'll put the toe plates down. As you guys just saw, we got the heights all set. It's about a two to a two and a half finger gap all the way around between the top of the tire and the bottom of the fenders and quarter panels. Now we're gonna get the toe plate set up. Now that we have the toe plates set up, we've got one on each side, obviously, and they're both set to the exact same position. So I like to line the center of this plate with the center cap, usually because that's just right there. It's easy to line it up to. And then I have rubber pegs that hold the tape measures on the plate on the other side. And then I like using the top of the top notch versus the bottom one. I like using the top one because I can hold the tape measure up against it and see exactly where I am. So for this one, I can see, you can always pull it out. I got my halfway, so 70 and a half, and then it is two sixteenths towards 70 and this side here is is three sixteenths closer or no sorry further apart because this measurement is bigger whatever measurement is bigger means that that's the side of the wheel that is further apart so an example in this case these are further apart than these so the wheel is sitting like this in comparison to the other side so they're both pointed towards each other so what we need to do is we need to bring them back out and we're doing they're only a sixteenth uh, of an inch towed in so we just need to bring that out we're going to bring this one out about a 30 second of an inch and then we'll do the same exact thing on the other side. We made a little adjustment on this side over here. We are four tenths of a centimeter from the number nine. And then over here, we are now three tenths. So that means that we have to bring the other side over one tenth of a centimeter to make this rear setup have zero toe.
Now we did our little adjustment on the other side. I knew exactly how, many, how much I turned this toe adjustment over here. So I just carried that over to the other side because I changed it a 30 second of an inch over here by doing half a rotation. So I just did half a rotation on the other side. And we've got four lines there and four lines there. So right now the car is set up at zero toe. So now that the toe settings are all correct and we have them set at zero because they're both the exact same number, I already personally did my camber settings earlier off camera while I was just hanging out, listening to music and stuff. But the way that you can adjust camber, again, at home, I would set your camber up first and then do your toe alignment. But what I would do, set a level against the bottom of the wheel and then move the top of it until the bubble is good in the center and then measure the distance from the edge of the level to the wheel. And if you, you can measure that with digital calipers or if you just wanna do something that's not super duper accurate, but it just gets you in the ballpark, you could use a tape measure as well. And then do the same thing on the other side of the car. That way you're only going based off of the wheel. All your measurements are off the wheel and they're true to what is level. So that's how I adjust camber at home. It's not super accurate. But again, camber isn't what is going to kill your tires, it's toe. And the toe plates do a perfect job of making sure that the wheels are parallel to each other and they're not towed in or towed out. So now that the camber and the toe is set exactly how I want it in the rear of the car, just make sure that you always retighten the lock nuts on any of your suspension components, that way that they don't end up readjusting themselves or coming out of whack. What we'll do now is pick up the toe plates and put everything back in the box and put it away. So there it is. Now you guys know how to do camber and toe alignments at home. It's pretty simple. What I like doing is I like doing it this way for like my race car if I wanna make adjustments at the track or before I go to the track. I just find it really easy to make slight adjustments at home. And in the video, it kind of probably makes it seem like it's very quick but it was just because it was set up so close already because the car was only done, you know, 500 miles ago. So it's perfect for doing it this way when you're at home and you just wanna make adjustments to your car. If you have a full build, you did like all new bushings and you did all new arms and stuff and you're putting it in for the first time, I think it, it's money well spent to have it taken to a shop because what could happen is this wheel compared to the front wheel, you know, your rear wheel compared to the front wheel could be towed in and then you could be towing the other side uh, in as well. And then eventually what you have is rather than a car that's perfectly straight, your rear tires are like this to each other and the car is like this. So that's the instance on when I think having it brought to a shop is a good idea, but I know that this is super close as well as my drift car. So I just make the slight adjustments at home. So thanks for hanging out while we did the alignment on the Civic today. I've got a video for you guys coming out in three days and it is going to be something that we probably won't see a ton of content about, but it was something I basically spent my entire winter doing. I restored a go-kart and uh, I kind of gave you guys a walk around about it just in case somebody sees it in the background of some of my videos, it's good to refer back to. So it kind of breaks it down from front to back and then there's a slideshow for it. And that way you guys can see the picture side of things
because I wasn't videoing at the time that I restored the go-kart and basically just see everything that I did to it. So that'll be out in three days from this video. Remember, I do shorts every single day. I've been playing around with the times that videos release at. So just know it'll be usually in the afternoon or later at night. So keep your eyes peeled for those. And then after the go-kart video will be, so six days from this video, we will be getting back, getting our hands on the RX-7 again, because I need to make sure that this thing is all good to go. We've got some parts from Holly Performance that need to go on it because we were having some issues with this car like at the end of last year, end of 22, and ended up changing the jets. So now I wanna go back to a different jet size on the carburetor. So stay tuned for those videos and we'll be getting back to the RX-7 shortly. So thank you guys for watching and hanging out. Hope you learned something on how to do alignments at home. It's not super perfect, but it's way better than just lowering your car and not doing anything to it because you will wear the tires out. So we'll see ya.